Hi everybody, it's Sarah again. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We have another paint pour video, so this is another type. This one is going to be a Dutch pour. Now for this one, uh, for my other uh, paint pouring videos, I reused other canvases. This time I want to have a clean, fresh canvas, just because the entire surface is not necessarily going to be covered. So I don't want things from the background peeking through. You might though, if you want to incorporate another painting somehow, and you know, I urge you to be creative with these paintings. So I'm using um, a smaller canvas as well this time, just because um, it's a little more manageable. Now with the Dutch pour, we're going to be blowing the paint. You can either use a straw or a hairdryer. If you use a hairdryer, you want to put it on low, cool setting so that it's not uh, heating up the paint. Heating the paint is going to make it set faster and that's going to make it get harder. Okay, so we want to keep the paint fluid. We do have some extenders in our paint that's going to make it more fluid, but also, so you can see how liquidy it is, but it's also going to extend our drying time. So the first step, so we are definitely going to need our straw. Again, this is a Dutch pour. I'm going to be using uh, a palette knife. Now, if you have a spatula at home or even a plastic butter knife, or you could even use a paintbrush. We just want to have something that's going to help us get a nice even coat of a base color. I'm going to use white as my base color. Now you can use anything as a base color. Maybe you want to use black or one of your colors. You don't have to use white. So, but the whole thing with the base color is that it's going to play off of the other colors and peek in from behind. Now, whenever we put our base color down, I'm going to make sure that all of my edges are covered. I want to make a nice even coat all over my canvas. So kind of like icing a cake. It doesn't have to be totally flawless though, because um, as your paint dries, it's going to, uh, the surface is going to even itself out a little bit, most of the way at least. You might have some unevenness, but the majority of it is going to be pretty smooth. You're going to be surprised. Now, before you use any of your paints, I suggest strongly stir them up. The paints that we use, we have a couple of different things that we put in them and we just don't want them to be separated. So just make sure that you stir your paints. So again, I just want to go around my sides, make sure that my entire canvas is covered. This is a gallery wrap style canvas. Maybe you're using a canvas board or tiles for your, uh, your painting. You can use any type of surface, but you just want to make sure that you have a nice even coat. So I'm going to be done with my palette knife at this point. I'm just going to wipe it off so that it doesn't um, get all over the place because I tend to be pretty messy. So I try to keep myself, my area and myself clean as I go along. Okay, so step number one, coat the entire surface with a base color. The next step is going to be adding some color to it. Now I tend to be a minimalist when it comes to the Dutch pour. I like to see the feathering along the edges um, and I like the contrast of my base color against all these other colors that I'm gonna be putting on here. So I am using our light teal, I'm using our lilac or light purple and our royal blue. Okay. Now, just because I put this on like this doesn't mean I have to stop there. I can put it all over the entire canvas if I want to, or, you know, just kind of take it easy and a little bit at a time. Now, the next step is going to be taking our straw. You can also use your hairdryer if you want to. Now, this surface isn't very big. I would say with a really big canvas, you might want to go with a hairdryer because you're going to get lightheaded blowing through a straw for a long period of time. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of blow lines coming out of this edge of color that direction. Now look at how pretty that is already. You can see the feathering happening. Just wait. Here we go.
you can give it a little wiggle. It starts to look kind of like waves in the ocean. Now, as I blow, colors that are underneath are going to be pulled up, including the white base. You can blow back and forth. You might have a different technique on how you blow and to get different kinds of uh, waves or feathers to your design. Now, I'm going to turn my canvas because I also like to blow it back the other direction so that I get the play of the white overlapping my colors. So I'm going to go around my edge here with a line of white or whatever it is you're using for a base color and blow it that direction. Make sure that you have this in a drip pan, and I always put mine on top of a, a drying rack inside of my drip pan so that whenever it's drying as it dries, it doesn't stick to my drip pan. Now look at how pretty that area is where that overlaps. I really like this. It's very galaxy looking in that section. You're going to find that you like certain spots and then you can always build on them. So I'm going to add a little more dark blue in here because I feel like it kind of got washed out with my teal, but a little overbearing. And you see, I don't have any light blue, but it starts to mix on my canvas. So be careful that you don't blow it too much or else you will, it all will start tending to become one color. Just like with any other painting, you have to know when it's time to stop. So you can turn it again and keep going, keep building back and forth, push this way, push that way until you get it to a nice place. Now let's look closely here. We can see some cells happening, just a couple popping through. We can see some lacing, that's these little tiny dots. Okay, now as your painting sits there, and then we have our feathering. See, it's a little shiny right now. It's hard to tell exactly uh, from the camera, but as you practice this, you're gonna see the kind of results that happen and what you might like better than other things. So just keep that in mind. Now, the longer that you let this sit here, it's going to evolve. So my finished painting a few days from now might be slightly different than the painting that I have that I say, I'm done tonight. So just keep that in mind. It is going to take a few days to dry. And um, so it's evolving because your paint, the air bubbles are coming to the surface and as they pop, they're gonna make more lacing. Um, they can make more cells. So yeah, look at how cool that is. Now you can see how textured that is. It's gonna all flatten out. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to watch my Dutch pour video. And um, I hope that you guys have fun creating your own Dutch pours. And tune in to the other videos that we have coming up. Give us a like on our video, subscribe to our channel, and maybe leave us a comment. Let us know what you think or even share a picture of one of your pores in the comments. Thank you guys, have a great night, and we hope to see you soon.